Let's remember when we're reading the Psalms that David in his spiritual times of life is a picture of Christ. Uh, in his times when he was failing, he was a picture of a human being failing. So uh, he said, save me, O God, by your name and judge me by your strength. This is a psalm of David, which was written when the uh, uh, Zephatite intended to <clears throat> betray him to Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 23. David is a type of Christ. He delivered certain people, <clears throat> but yet they betrayed him. Likewise, Christ has delivered this world, and yet they have betrayed him. And uh, in either case, David did not attempt to avenge himself, just like in Romans 12 and 19. He knew that vengeance belonged to God, and that the trusting servant who tried does not take matter into his own hands, but relies on his master to rescue him. David could have took that matter in his own hands and killed that guy, but he said, no, God, you're in charge. You take care of it. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to my words of my mouth. And the answer is any problem that any believer may have is to take it to the Lord in prayer. This is where we need to be. Verse 2 and 54. For strangers are risen up against me and oppress me. Seek after my soul. They have not set God before themselves. Selah. The strangers were the men of Cala. And the oppressors were Saul and his henchmen. Why would they seek David's destruction? They did so because they have not set God before them. Uh, when it comes to God, men cannot be neutral. They are either opposed or in favor of him. As this spoke David, and also spoke of the greatest son of David. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with whom he upholdeth my soul. This means that the few who seek to, uh, to help David would be um, blessed immensely by the Lord. And he shall reward evil unto the enemy and cut them off in your truth. This ultimately happened exactly as David prayed, his enemies were ultimately cut off. And the reason was obvious is because thy truth, men would find out what God's truth is and follow his truth in his word. Because David was the example and he was the truth. And he was going to be victorious. Verse 6, I will freely sacrifice unto you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Wow, this sacrifice was offered, by the way, in faith. Likewise, praise was also offered in faith. Despite the difficulties and circumstances, David knew that God would ultimately deliver him. This is where you and I are supposed to live today. Verse 7. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has he seen desire upon my enemies. This is prior to the total victory that is writing this. Most probably, this was written by faith. He called those things that were not as though they were. And that day of victory ultimately came. The setting of this psalm is uh, aptly uh, described, however, is uh, prophetically. It concerned the Messiah and the uh, minority of the Jews who will in the last days believe on him, possibly even the 144,000. You must know a little scripture to understand that. 
Jesus asked for a just punishment upon their enemies. Uh, being himself sinless as man and thus as God, he can demand a fitting judgment. He claims a just sentence upon these convicted transgressors. Well, thank you. This was a, uh, a very short seven-verse psalm, and we will see you next time.